tranquil and serene, rivers and canals wend their gentle way through the landscape. Through forests and hills, valleys and lakes, town and country. From mountain streams to grand estuaries. A canal or a river is an excellent place for a stroll or a picnic on a warm summer's afternoon. But do not be fooled by this tranquility, for it is not all swans, reed beds, and the sound of gently lapping water. Until the ascent of the railways in the 1830s, Waterways were the predominant form of inland transport and bustled with trade and commerce. From the coal fields of Tyneside, the iron works of the Black Country, from the ore mines of Cumbria to the cotton mills of Lancashire, nearly everything that moved moved by boat. From the earliest days, people built settlements on coasts and riverbanks to take advantage of the opportunities for transport and trade that only water could bring. Making good use of waterways is therefore of the first importance in the early years, and to do that requires an understanding of their particular characteristics and features. Here is a small stream. It is not navigable, but cannot be crossed by road or railway without a bridge, except that it is put into a culvert. To put a stream into a culvert, use the demolished remove tool on a pile of stream. A road or a railway can now be built on top of the culvert. Note, however, that a culvert is often more expensive than a bridge. This is a navigable river. As is this. And this. Different sizes of navigable rivers can take different sizes of boats. The smallest can take only small boats and barges, whereas the largest can take all but the most enormous of ocean-going ships. Rivers can be upgraded to canals to allow them to take larger vessels, and even unnavigable rivers can be canalized. Canals are artificial rivers. Like natural rivers, they need a source of water. For this reason, canals can only be built on low ground, as water needs to drain into them from higher ground. The smaller the canal, the less water that it needs, and so the higher that it can be built. This small tubboat canal, for instance, can be built on much higher ground, than this large ship canal. Locks allow boats to pass over even steep gradients, but they are slow to operate. Vessels travelling over locks will travel much more slowly than on a flat section of water. This small tubboat canal uses inclined planes instead of locks, where the small boats are hauled up the incline on an early form of railway, but the effect is the same. The boats can pass over the incline, but at a much lower speed than on the flat. A wide variety of canals can be built. This is a 14-foot barge canal of the sort built by the pioneering Duke of Bridgewater in 1761. This is a 7-foot narrowboat canal, the type that crisscrossed the Midlands and made the area the engine of the early Industrial Revolution. This is a tubboat canal. These were used in Cornwall to serve mines in hard to reach places. This is a ship canal. It allows ocean shipping to dock at an inland port. 
and this is a large ship canal, based on that built in 1894, connecting Manchester to the sea. It can take the largest ocean-going ships of the late 19th century. All navigable rivers are public rights of way. Unlike unnavigable streams, they cannot be put into a culvert, but they can be diverted. To divert a navigable river, first build a small diversionary canal. Then, fill in the old riverbed using the demolish remove tool. The new diversionary canal will then become a public right-of-way itself. This means that, even if it is privately built and owned, anyone may sail a boat upon it without restriction. Likewise, any navigable river that has upgraded to a canal will also retain its status as a public right-of-way, and any boat will be free to pass on it. These are river rapids. They can sometimes appear when a river descends a grating. River rapids are not navigable even if the waters on either side of the rapids are. To make river rapids navigable, the river on the slope needs to be upgraded to a canal. This will install a lock in place of the rapids and make the way navigable on the grating. This is a flyboat. Flyboats use teams of fast, strong horses to haul boats along a canal much more quickly than ordinary canal traffic. However, the horses tire rapidly and must be changed at frequent intervals. Hence, flyboats have a limited range between stops. The range is shown in the depot window near the top of the right-hand column. And the distance between each stop is displayed in the schedule. So it is easy to see whether a flyboat can be used for any given run. With this information, and a little skill in civil engineering, you too will be able to transport goods sufficiently inland in the days before steam trains, whether by barge, narrow boat, tub boat, or ocean going vessel. All manner of trade and transport is possible by making good use of inland navigations. Thank <laughs> you.